Hi guys, welcome back again. Today, I'm finally going to refuel line this um, weed eater the correct way. So basically, I ran to Hardware Hank, finally. Um, there was an errand that needed to be ran there anyhow, so I figured, why not? So, um, no, I might get cr criticized this, but not this part. I'm not gonna get criticized for that, but, there was this line there. Let me turn this light on. Okay, so there was this there. Now, this fit the primer bulb, which I have in a bag, so I brought it with, just to make sure. Garbage receipt I don't need. Come on. Just struggling today. Okay, really? There we go. I'm gonna use the Mountain Dew box since I have that right on hand here. Anyways, what I needed is I needed the one that fit on the smaller barb of the carb. <laughs> Just like that. But this line is almost as thick as this stuff, but this stuff fits on this other barb, the thicker barb, which I'm gonna take this stuff back off. See, doesn't fit on this one. It just slides right off. Uh, excuse me. It goes around that one. Now I also have something to refuel or reline too. It's a different, or it's another, it's just a power head of a, of a uh, excuse me, because I got the hiccup burps right now. Um, it's just the, um, you guys got to give me a break. I don't know why I'm not thinking right now. It's just the power head of a attached, you know, like the one, the trimmers that you can do the, um, like the, the combi systems, that kind. It's not actually uh, steel though. Um, I've only had one steel. You guys saw that. Um, anyway, doesn't the Murray just look great though? God, I love how the new paint looks. I'm glad I uh, found that. Now, I am going to need to refresh my memory in a minute on what's exactly going on here that's wrong. But if I remember right, um, this line had to go on the carb, but this line evidently didn't fit. So my hope is, because I found this thicker line, I hope, I'm hope i hoping they're about, I don't know, they feel about the same size. I'm hoping they are the same or very close. And then um, we'll just stick this new line in. We're good to go. So, because I, I knew they made thicker line. Now, so I might get a comment saying, oh, that's not fuel rated line. Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter because this stuff will still work. I think. It, sh it should work, irregardless. Anyways, uh, I have a video saved on my phone of the correct way to fuel refuel line this. I, oh, actually, I just noticed too. This fuel line is cracked. There you go. It's cracked. See that? So, let me, uh, let me go find the correct um, fuel line rerouting. I'm just having a, I'm just struggling today, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, this trimmer is not making sense. All right, I gotta grab a flashlight here. Okay. Have a look in there, right? So, there's the fuel filter. Now, I gotta actually hold this here. I don't get what is going on with this system. Now, uh, I think this has been relined for. Oh, come on. I need a screwdriver. There we go. Gotta get a screwdriver to get this back out. Okay. Sorry if the filming isn't great. I'm trying to. My phone sometimes captures stuff I show, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's an S21, so it should be pretty good. Oh, shit. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. So then, that's just your return line. So, the guy redid the fuel filter line, which I'm going to actually just pull the whole damn thing out and show you what he's got going on here. Yeah. That's what I'm faced with. 
I know, con it's confusing as shit to me. But that goes to the barb of the carb. Like that that e that this that goes to the carburetor. Hmm. See now that's what I don't get, because then this is your return line. But also, guess what? This don't fit. Right? Now, I think even if I cut it, it still isn't going to fit. Eh, it doesn't fit as tightly as I'd like for it to. But now this line, this new shit, oh yeah. That ain't going to leak. But, my question is, is it too small for it to properly seal? No. See, if it was too small, it'd just go right in. So it's actually the correct size. Not exactly the correct size, but it's, it's a closer size than um, before. So, basically, I just need to recut the same amount. I'm gonna go a little extra because you can always take off more you can't add more now look look at how stretched over that is to make it onto there I have no idea if I'll be able to get this to go on there without breaking it <laughs> but I'll sure try okay yeah this is not gonna happen and now we got an annoying cricket in the background cool How's about I pause this and uh, come back because this is otherwise. Okay, finally, 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 finally done with that. Now, I'm just going to check and make sure that this piece of fuel line that was already on the carb is still good, which it is. It fits the carb nice and tight. So, um, I just ended up replacing, there was this. Now, there was this much extra line in the tank. So now I've got that line for a different project because it's still, I mean, it's still plenty flexible. It's just, it's the wrong size, so it leaks. I think this guy that had it before me, because I found it on the street for free, if you don't remember, if you haven't seen this yet or whatever. Um, yeah, he must have replaced the fuel lines. But anyways, that's besides what I'm doing. Um, I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm doing. I was gonna say I'm gonna uh, take the, or just mount the carb and then fuel line it, but I'm actually gonna just measure it up here. So what you wanna do is put the carb up against the plate, which you guys can see, I might zoom it in a bit here. So you put the carb against this plate, this engine plate, and then, well actually it's mounted like this, I'm pretty sure, because it, yeah, it goes to the bottom. Now I'm actually going to leave this extra amount of fuel line because, um, it, trust me, it'll just make my life a lot easier. As long as this thing doesn't leak from the carb, I'll be okay now, I would think. So yeah, it's okay to have a little extra, just like that. Because um, I'm not entirely sure, maybe it mounts like this. Oh wait, actually, you know what? I just remembered. I need to look back. So there's a video that I'm currently watching on this. Uh, it's the same exact trimmer, I'm pretty sure. But the guy redoes the fuel lines on it, and I think that this, which is the fuel line filter, mounts to the, the bottom barb on the carb. But I gotta make sure, I gotta find out which way it's oriented. I'm pretty sure, well, if you squeeze the trigger, I don't know. I'm gonna look it up quick. Just wanna make sure I get this right. All right, I had it right the first time. It does uh, mount to the bottom one, like this. It was, it was right. So, basically the way this should work, in theory, is, um, 
I gotta find out which is the push and pull on this, but essentially one is your return and one is your pulling and it pulls it through the carb, which absolutely does make sense. So let me just find this out and then I'm actually just gonna refuel line the whole thing, come back once I have it reassembled and then maybe test it, maybe not, we'll see. Okay, so I'm back. Basically I had to take out the fuel tank in order to reroute these, which to take out the fuel tank, you just take out this bolt and there's a nut on the other side, but it's already being held on. So anyhow, um, ran a fuel line. The red one on the tank is the fuel filter. And then the other one is the return line. And then there's a, coming from the carb is another red line, which is your return line. And then there's that green line, which I'll actually turn on a flashlight here and show you a little bit better. So it's kind of hard to see, but basically the top barb of the carb, when you put it back on, will go to the smaller port on the primer bulb, if you're doing the same trimmer. The, the smaller side, boom. Or it goes to the side that sucks fuel. And then this green one goes back up to the tank and has no filter, and that one is your return line. So. I'm hoping that now that everything is tight, that I won't have any more leaks. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Um, I don't know what I did with the bolts that hold on this, so for now there's... <laughs> it's just it kind of is what it is for the primer bulb, but um, all you gotta do is just hold it and then pump it. It's just it's not mounted, so you can't just push it in. You know, you gotta kinda hold it and pump it, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'll get this thing outside and I'll fuel it up. Throttle's working. Oh yeah, and I should mention for the throttle too, on the carb. Again, I need that dang flashlight. Hold on. All right. So, if the carb on this plate right here, throttle plate, which you can see the line is going to, you are going to want that. There's two holes. Put it on the bottom hole, the, the one closest to that. Anyways. Let's get this thing outside. Let's see if it leaks fuel. Let's see if it still runs. Because um, it's, unfortunately, I, I have to sometimes let stuff sit outside. You know, um, the Murray, I try and keep in the garage as much as I can, but sometimes it just has to sit outside for a while. Um, that, that includes all my equipment. But, um, anyhow, it still turns over good. So, I'll get you guys set up outside. I'll put some fuel in it. And uh, we shall see. Um, I'll see also if I can find the uh, stuff for this and I still have the air filter box I don't know where I set that right now. I've got a pretty good mess going on. It's somewhere over towards my toolbox So, Anyways meet you guys outside. Okay moment of truth. Does it prime? Oh, fuel's coming down Fuel's entered the bulb and is leaving. Oh, it's really full. Yeah, that works really good. Okay. So, 
basically what's happening is it doesn't have quite enough fuel but to, to idle so let me just see if I can maybe bump that speed up and see if that changes things oh yeah I also put on some earmuffs now so basically there's just a screw your turn um, I'm not gonna particularly show it let's see So it only will run on a half choke. Won't run on anything less. And there's only one adjustment with a limiter cap right there. And that is only for low speed, if I remember right. But at least I'm gonna get a screwdriver. I am not sure how well you guys will be able to see this with the sun, but anyways, it's an adjusting screw right here. Um, essentially you turn it. It was all the way this way. So I'll try halfway in between. If that makes it better. Hopefully it does. <laughs> seems to want to run on a half choke, which might just have to be where it's ran. I mean, it's certainly still pulling fuel good, I'm giving it a couple of primes just to make sure. I mean, there's like no air in the lines though, which is weird. You have to give it throttle to get it to too.
I'm going to go and use this thing normally, like just go and try a couple of things. I guess you guys couldn't even really see most of that. I'm going to try a couple of things and then um, uh, I'll come back and tell you how it ran. I got it down. Two other trimmers to fix too. Um, actually, be hold on. I just I had a trimmer caught on fire um, last year. It was my I guess you'd say it was my brother's, but I got two trimmers for free: the Ryobi that I used in my last video, and then I got a Toro one that's kind of rare that caught on fire. But Toro doesn't run. I haven't gotten it to run good yet. I got to order a carb and redo the fuel lines, and but that one I'm probably gonna keep just because it caught on fire. Anyways, yeah, so I'll be back after I clean it up. Sorry about the wind noise. Um, see, maybe that'll be better. Um, not sometimes the wind can really affect the way um, videos are. But anyways, let me just clean this up, spend some time on it, and then uh, I'll come back. So hopefully it doesn't really leak out of the car. I don't know if it does, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. But whatever. All right, I'll be back after I am done. And there we go. It's clean. I cleaned everything with Windex, and then I wiped down the gas tank. I wiped down all this area, which is actually like, well, I was reflective for a bit, but it helps. And then this, to polish it, I used WD-40 and steel wool. Did a pretty good job. Down here is kind of hard because it's really faded and stuff, but cleaned all that up. Just wiped this down with WD-40 after I cleaned it with Windex, because I cleaned everything with Windex. Same thing, wipe this handle down. And it doesn't actually, like WD-40, um, even though I wiped it on this handle, it, it's not slippery like you'd think it would be. Like it doesn't even leave a film on your hands, you know? But um, yeah, so this is going up for sale now. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments box below. Trying to kind of block the camera from the wind here, so it's a little, little bit hard. But um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments on how I did this, so I can make an in-depth video. Otherwise, consider subscribing to help grow my channel because it's not very big yet. Um, other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.